In this video, we're gonna look at what a wowger is, as if you've ever done any research about cask investment or cask ownership, you've probably come across the acronym W-O-W-G-R. So in this video, we're gonna look at what wowgers are and do you need one and how it relates to your cask investment. Right, from the start, let's be clear what a wowger is and isn't. So what isn't a wowger? There's no such thing as a wowger. You don't get given a wowger. What you do, you apply to be to, to sort of be part of the wowger register. So wowger is the acronym W-O-W-G-R. It stands for Warehouse Keepers and Owners of Warehouse Goods Regulations. It's a very lengthy and dull and boring set of regulations which are governed by Excise Notice 196. And what it does, it sets out the legislative framework about owning duty suspended goods in warehouses. And Excise, one, ex, excise Notice 196, it doesn't just apply to whiskey, it also applies to wines and tobacco and other goods that are held in bond, so without any duty or VAT having been paid on them. You might have come across the fact that, or you might have been told that you need a wowger with relation to cask investment. And it's normally when you're asking for a delivery order, which we went into a lot more detail in our previous video. So do you need a wowger? Well, let's not speculate. Let's look at excise notice 196 specifically and see what it says about private individuals owning casks. Because if you're watching this video, that's probably what you're interested in. So all you need to do is head onto the HMRC website and look at uh, or Google excise notice 196. Now, the majority of this site isn't necessarily relating to whiskey casks and cask investments. So what you need to do, the important section for you if you're a cask owner, is to look at section 5.1 regulation of owners of goods in warehouses, including duty representatives. Now, section 5.1 is extremely important because it states here, and I'll read it verbatim, all owners of duty suspended excise goods must obtain approval and registration unless, and this is the important part, unless the owner of the excise goods is not a revenue trader. So what it's here is saying that it's not spelling out explicitly that you do not need one, but what it's saying, if you're not a revenue trader, then you do not need one. So fortunately, at the end of this uh, document, there is a definition of what a revenue trader is in relation to this excise notice 196. It says, in the context of this notice, anyone carrying on a trade or business concerned with the buying, selling, importation, exportation, dealing in and handling of excise goods and the financing or facilitation of any such transactions or activities. So if you're not a business, you do not need a wowger. If you're a private individual, it's clearly saying that if you're not a revenue trader, as in if you're not a business, then you do not need a wowger. But there's certain conditions here because what happens if you become a revenue trader by accident? Well, that means that you do need a wowger. So the most obvious way is that all casks have to be purchased from a private individual and the money, importantly, has to come from a private bank account. If you're purchasing these casks from a business, you're instantly a revenue trader and therefore you need the wowger approval or get on the wowger register. Now, another, the, the beauty of HMRC guidance is that it's very open into it to interpretation. These legislations are sort of decades old, you know, often, and then often not fit for purpose with today's law. So what happens if you own 20 casks? Are you a revenue trader? Well, we employ HMRC consultants. We spoke to a lot of people in the industry, including distilleries and warehouse keepers, and they all say, keep your ownership limit of kiss, casks, kisks, casks below five. So one to five casks appears to be the general consensus that you can own without being considered to be a revenue trader. Now, if you want to go over and above that, and you want to test case law and you want to try this, then by all means try it because there's nothing here in this legislation to say that five casks is a maximum. It's an interpretation of the legislation. We at Mark Little Limited, we're a very conservative bunch of people in terms of we don't like risk. So if we can minimize that risk to you, then we will do. So why us, our HMRC consultants and lots of other people in the industry, the general consensus is do not own more than five casks, otherwise you could be seen as a revenue trader. 
Another misconception is that you need a wowger in order to get a delivery order, and this is a complete fallacy. There is, as we've just seen in Excise Notice 196, you're allowed to own duty suspended goods if you're a private individual. You can't own them if you're a revenue trader. So there's nothing stopping you getting a delivery order without having a wowger. Now, the only instance where you would need a wowger is that if, you, if the warehouse where the cask was stored stipulated that anyone holding an account in our warehouse is required to have a wowger, i.e. we only deal with business and trade accounts. But if you're buying this cask as a member of the public, as a private individual, then you should not be working with that warehouse. Your cask should be in a warehouse that allows private accounts. And if it's not, you can't get a delivery order and you can't get full ownership of that cask. So the reality of it is, is that you do not need a wowger in order to get a delivery order. So as a brief summary, you do not need a wowger in order to get a delivery order. You do not need a wowger if you're a member of the public and a private individual holding casks in your own name. But there are interpretations of excise notice 196 that need to be made. If you want to play it extremely safe, as most warehouse keepers will, they will only allow you to hold up to a maximum of five casks in your own name. So this means that you've got to be very careful and very selective with your purchases. And likewise, you can't build up a very big portfolio of casks Otherwise, it would be quite easy through the lens of excise notice 196 to be interpreted as a revenue trader. And the last thing that you want to be doing is retrospectively applying for, uh, for, for, for acceptance onto a register because it already, it already sort of implies that you didn't understand the terms of that register in the first place.